All right, welcome everyone. I'm very glad to see you all here on a Saturday. Um, very nice of you to get up to see me at 7.30. So uh, I'm gonna finish section 2.8, start a little bit of the next chapter um, and that's gonna be it. So the last bit of section 2.8 talks about higher derivatives. Um, so what does this mean? It means uh, you have a function and then you take the derivative and what do you get? <clears throat> well, we just, the point of the section is that you get a function because at every point you have a slope and that means that at every, for every number you get another number, which is what a function is. So you get another function. So what you can do is take the derivative again. And that's gonna give you something we call the second derivative, which is a name that makes a lot of sense. Um, and I guess what the third derivative is. <clears throat> so the so you can you can take derivatives uh, until you get born. So the point is um, the derivative is you know, we pretty much know what it's telling us. It's telling us about the slope of the graph. It's telling us about the rate of change. It's saying how fast the output changes as the input um, changes. So. Um, what is the second derivative telling us? That's the question. It does. F double prime say about F. Um, okay, so let's do an example. I, I like the example in the book, um, x cubed minus x. So um, let's take the derivative and let's take the second derivative. So how am I gonna find the second derivative? I'm gonna find the derivative and then I'm gonna find the derivative of that. Uh, so, the first derivative is the, the limit as h approaches zero of what you get uh, well, what you the increment in f minus the increment in x, uh, which I'm calling h as I like to do. And what I gotta do here is uh, plug in well f. So f of anything is that cubed minus that. So what I'm supposed to do is um, replace f by by x cubed minus x. So when when I see x plus h, when, when I see x in f, I put in x plus h in there. So x plus h, that's a no girl. And just to be safe, let's use brackets so we don't get everything wrong. So wherever there was an x, I put in an x plus h. And now I have to subtract and let's put some brackets there because I want to make sure I'm subtracting everything. But I don't, if I forget these brackets, this minus is going to stay a minus and it should become a plus after I distribute. And then there's h in the denominator. Okay, so, so that's a mess. I got to simplify that. Um, and maybe, you know, a formula for the for how to expand the cube like that. Or maybe 
<clears throat> you know how to expand the square. And, and then we can multiply it by the, um, we can expand that. Okay, let's get rid of those brackets. So the this minus with this plus becomes a minus and this minus with this minus becomes a plus. Uh, and now I gotta turn the page. So the way this works is I can't um, can copy and paste because this app kind of sucks. So let me just rewrite what I had. X plus H times X plus H squared minus X plus H. You can look at these notes separately, by the way, um, and turn the page at your wheel. So that's what I have. No, that's not what I have. Oh my God. This is what I have. <clears throat> okay, so uh, I gotta deal, I mean, I gotta deal especially with this. This, and I'm just gonna distribute the minus. So if I, if I leave the, um, I'm gonna leave that X plus H there for a second, take that, expand this square as the sum of the squares and uh, twice the product, as you very well know by now. I'm going to distribute the minus sign. So minus and plus becomes minus and minus and plus becomes a minus again. And I'm gonna cancel those X's, these cancel, which is good because um, <clears throat> I'm hoping the limit is zero over zero. I'm hoping that an H will eventually factor out. So I'm hoping this X cubed that has no H will eventually cancel out. And now, um, I'm gonna multiply that. So there's no foil uh, for this as far as I know, because, <laughs> because foil is BS. It, it only works when you have two things by two things. But uh, the point is you have to multiply everything by everything. So the first times the first, the first times the second, the first times the third, second times the third, second times the, sorry, second times the first, second times the second, second times the third. And there's there's two things here and three things here that, that gives me two times three things that you get in the end, which makes, um, which makes uh, six. So let's just do it. So I'm gonna multiply X so a way to make sure I multiply everything by everything is to make a little table. And then everything is easy to multiply. And then I just combine them all. And also if I put them in order, um, the, the like terms are gonna be in the diagonal. So here I have three X squared H and three X H squared. So that makes X cubed plus three X squared H plus three X H squared plus H cubed. Um, and then minus H minus X cubed from before. Or you could have just known this formula from the beginning or Googled it. Um, because I mean, um, it's the 21st century, like this is, Really not that important to memorize. Um, let's see, let's Google now. Oh, oh well. No, I don't want. I don't want the sum of cubes. I want the cube of the sum. Right. Well, I guess it didn't work. If you write binomial theorem, it will work. Anyway. Um, so um, we'll figure it out anyway. 
now that H is still chilling. Um, and now I have the X cubes cancel as I was hoping for. So I'm left with um, left with stuff that has H, which is great, is what I should have. So now this limit still looks like zero divided by zero, but everything has an H in it. So I can factor out an H. Um, H goes to zero of H times one less H from, from here is zero H's, one H, two H's, zero H's. So one H because there's two uh, over here, um, two H's because there's three over here and zero H's because there's one over here. And finally, I can cancel these H's and the limit would stop will stop being zero divided by zero. I'm gonna be able to, I'm gonna get a continuous function in which I can plug in and get uh, my answer, which is three X squared minus one. All right. <clears throat> so um, that's one derivative. So to recap, I have a function I have its derivative and I wanted to compute its second derivative. So I'm going to find the derivative of 3x squared minus 1. The limit as um, I mean, my favorite limit in the world, uh, where I put in f prime in there. And f prime is, is this formula. It's this formula, so I'm going to go plug in x plus h into there. So I'm getting the limit of x plus h. So just put x plus h in brackets so you don't run into trouble. Square minus 1, and then put the second time you write the function in brackets as well so you don't. So this minus sign doesn't mess with your life. And to make sure you, you haven't uh, ruined everything, plug in h equals zero here and see if you still get, it should still be zero divided by zero. Uh, 3x squared minus one, and here I have 3x squared minus one still. So it's zero divided by zero, I didn't mess up. Um, so I'm, I'm doing the same thing. Um, simplifying, so I have another square of a sum of two things. I'm distributing the, the minus sign, minus times plus is minus, minus times minus is plus, which is good because um, these ones are gonna cancel. And then I have, now I distribute this three over, oh, over all my apps. Um, this three over this sum. So three X squared plus six X H plus three H squared. And things are going great because these cancel now and I am left with, um, with everything as an H um, is what I have just like before. Um, still zero divided by zero, but once I cancel the H, that's gonna go away. So H, uh, I pull out an H, I'm left with nothing. H squared is one H outside, one H inside. And this cancel, these cancel. Um, and I'm left with six X. So the second derivative is six times X. So um, let's look at a graph and see what's telling us.
So the first derivative I said was um, 3x squared minus 1. And the second one is 6x. Yeah. No, no, no. Here. So that's a function. That's, and those are the first two derivatives. So, um, <clears throat> what am I looking at? So, I'm going to try to guess what, what the drawing is going to come out like um, before I, I show the graph as a way of making sure I understand what's going on. So, if I look, um, so like we were doing this week, this graph is going to be positive when the slope of the original graph is positive and negative when the slope of the original graph is going down. So for example, this point, which this was has marked for me, it has a horizontal, um, what do you call it? <clears throat> Uh, tangent. So the derivative there is zero. Uh, so I guess I know the derivative is going to go through through these points. Um, oh. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, the fact that I know what the points are. But, you know, pretend it's hard to draw. It's harder, it's easier to write coordinates than to, than to try drawing in this thing. So I know the second derivative is going through these places. And what, what else do I know? I know over here, it's, um, the slope is going up, it seems, um, until it becomes horizontal. So the derivative is positive. So the derivative being positive means I'm drawing something above the axis. And the same is happening on this side, on the right side. Um, it's, it's going up, so the derivative is positive, so I'm drawing something under the, uh, over the graph. And here it's going down, so it's um, below the axis. So, here, um, F is going down, the derivative is negative. <laughs> or did I get this right? Um, I mean, it looks ugly, but hopefully the idea is there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So um, you can see wherever, like I was saying, wherever the function, wherever the, the, the red function, the original one, goes up, the, um, the blue function, the derivative is positive, then it goes down, the derivative becomes negative, and then it goes back up, and the derivative becomes positive again. And well, notice at these points, it knows what the important points are. Uh, and you can see it really looks like they have the same x coordinate. Okay, so that's the first derivative. Nothing new here, I guess. But now the second derivative, well, I guess there's nothing new because I'm doing the same thing again. Now I'm saying, um, I mean, you know what it's gonna look like, it's a line. Now I notice that on the left side, the derivative is going down. The derivative is a blue function. Um, 
So the second derivative, which is its derivative, is going to be negative. So whatever it is, whatever it's doing, it's um, it is down here. Oh, down here. No, oh, that doesn't work. Down here. Oh, cool. And on the opposite side, f prime is going up. So the second derivative is going to be positive. So, and, and right here in the, in the middle, the tangent is horizontal. This is the tangent, right? Um, so here the, the derivative is going to be um, going to be zero. So I think it's going to look something like this. It's it's negative, and then it crosses over there, and then it's positive. And and you're looking at the at the equation, you probably realize that that is indeed what it looks like. No, no eraser. No. Okay, so um, okay, so I know how to how to make sense of what goes from here to here and from here to here. I'm drawing the, but if I if I saw the first graph, how do I go from from the first to the third? And well. Here's what's going on. The, the middle graph, the blue one, is the slope. And then, so it's telling, like saying if the red one is increasing or decreasing. And then the, the red one is the slope of that one. So it's telling me if this one is increasing or decreasing. It's telling me if the slope is increasing. So. much um, f prime is increasing and f prime is the slope of f um, right so those are two ways of talking about the derivative uh, it tells you how much the original function is increasing and it measures the slope of the graph so the second derivative measures how much um uh the derivative I think um the slope of f is changing and we can see that in a picture um if you if you're careful okay so let let's draw the, that line um So let's draw the tangent lines. So this is the equation of the tangent line. So it doesn't matter. I just wanted to show. Um, okay. So if I move this around, I get. I get the tangent lines. Cool. Um, and I can sort of, I can draw two at once, why not? So we can see if it's increasing or decreasing. Mm. I think that worked. Um, so, so there's two tangent lines drawn now, um, and 
the point, maybe I, oh, maybe I only need one. <clears throat> so the point is here, so here it's very steep. It's going, it's going up very fast. As I move to the right, it's, it's still going up, um, but it's going up less fast. And here it starts to go down and going down just means it's, you can think of also, I mean, numbers becoming more, the slope becoming more negative is the same as becoming less positive. So all over the left side, so if you know, on the left side of the graph, um, probably your left is here. The slope um, moves down as x increases. And the slope moving down makes the second derivative negative. On the other side, what's going to happen? What's going to happen is um, the opposite. If on the other side, the slope is going to move up as x increases. So the second derivative is positive. If I, if I now, so here, th this line, it's tilting down. Once I pass zero, exactly when I pass zero, it stops tilting down, it starts tilting up. And that, how, how fast it's tilting up is, is the second derivative. So, um, so what does the graph look like when it's becoming, when it's tilting down? It looks like a, it looks like a mountain, or it looks convex down, or whatever you want to call it. Um, when it's tilting up, what the graph looks like is is like a valley or a convex up. So, so that's what it's telling you. That's what the second derivative is. It's telling you if your graph is turning down or up. Um, since I'm here, um, I can just make, I can make F any function, really. Um, there's another function. So, Oh, F prime. So still I have in blue a function and in in red it's derivative, which I mean looks interesting, but let's ignore that for now. And as I move um as I move the point around, the the tangent line changes, of course. But the thing is between so I start at zero and then it starts tilting, it starts til uh, tilting down. The second derivative is taking negative values. Then you keep going and tilts us up, it tilts, blah, blah, it tilts up, um, which you can tell from the second derivative taking positive values and so on. And take whatever function you want. Um, This function. Um, so it's all the same for this bit between. Well, now I'm just I've never seen this function before. But between zero and I've never seen that function before in my life. Between zero and two and a half or something, it's it, it's curving up, and the blue graph, the second derivative it's positive. Then the, the blue graph, the red, graph, well, the black graph becomes negative and this has a mountain. Then it has a valley. The second derivative is positive. Then it has, um, again, it has, uh, what you call it? A mountain. So the second derivative is negative. <clears throat> 
Two examples. It's too, too messy. Um, anyway, you can play around with this. I can save this and I'm putting in the notes. I'll do that. I'm going to do that. Okay, so that is what the second derivative looks like in a graph. Let's go back to algebra. Oh, no, no, it's not what I want. I want, um, oops. So, uh, there's there's a second derivative that you probably know very well, which is um, when you have a moving thing. Um, if you have a moving thing, so say you have f of t is the position of a moving I don't know, anything, car and time t. So then we already talked about uh, this. The derivative is it's the, it's the rate of change of the position divided by the change in time. And you know the change in position divided by change in time is the velocity. So the derivative is the, the speed or the velocity. I guess velocity because if it's negative, it means it's going back. So what happens when I take the derivative of that function? So this is the change, I mean, based on, based on the definition is the change in speed divided by the change in time. So how much, how much your speed is changing per second? Um, and we have a word for the change in speed. Um, it's acceleration. So the second derivative of the position of something is the, its acceleration. And you might know that acceleration is very important because it tells you um, it tells you things such as um, the force um, the force you, that that thing is the force the engine is doing on the thing or the other way around. If you know the force, that's telling you the acceleration. Um, so here's a question. Um, maybe I'll, I'll do it on Monday. But you can think about it. Um, a car is stop at a light. And so it's a, it's a story. Um, the car is stopped. And then the light goes green. The car accelerates. Um, the it reaches a speed of so for a while it uh, reaches a speed of uh, 40 miles per hour then um, it, it the the next light turns red And uh, it, it breaks. And then it overshoots the, 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 um, the what you call it, the crossing. So it backs up, which is definitely very good driver. Um, so you have a car. Um, it stops. The light turns. The light turns green. It accelerates. Then it keeps going at a speed, at the speed limit. Hopefully, um, 
then it sees a red light go, it slams the brakes, it stops, it uh, stops like halfway in the crossing, and then it goes in reverse. And um, and then stops at the, at the red light. So what does what what does the um, position velocity and acceleration look like? <clears throat> All right, I'll do that on, on Monday. So um, that's going to be it. That's going to be it for chapter two. So I'm going to talk a bit of chapter three. So chapter three, it's, um, it's basically computing every derivative in existence. Um, that's what we're about to do. Um, instead of every time we want to write a derivative, do this limit, which is getting kind of old, uh, we're just gonna, basically we're gonna do all the limits. And then once we do them and we know what the answer is, we're just gonna memorize the answer. Um, and, and then derivatives are gonna get really easy to do. Um, I mean, some parts might be still confusing and there might be like algebra involved and we can always make mistakes there, but it's really just like, there's a recipe for doing derivatives and we're gonna learn it. And recipes, you're gonna appreciate when they show up because most things don't have a recipe. Most things, there's just like, nobody's telling you how to do them because there's no like way that works for everything. So we're going to learn every derivative. By every, I mean, we don't know every function, right? Because there's infinitely many of those. There's more There's more functions and names you could give them. But the functions we know. So um, we're just gonna go, go through all of them. It's gonna take a couple of weeks, but constant functions. So you have a number and a function that whatever you input outputs that number. Uh, what is its derivative? Its derivative, uh, well, I don't, I don't know the, the answer yet, so I'm gonna do it. Is what you get when you plug in x plus h, you plug in x and you divide by h and you take the limit. So uh, this formula, it's kind of confusing because there's no x around and I'm supposed to, for every x that there is, plug in x plus h. But I mean, if there's nothing, if there's no x, x's, there's nothing to do. I'm just, that's, that's it. Whatever you plug in, the answer is c. So the answer is c. And the same goes for f of x. So this limit is, is zero over zero, but also it's a function that is exactly zero always. So um, the derivative of a constant is zero. All right, so this doesn't, I mean, uh, some of these rules have a name, like the product rule has, everyone calls the product rule, but everyone just doesn't give a name to the fact that the derivative of a constant is zero. Um, all right, power functions. Um, <clears throat> all right, I'll do power functions and then stop there. So the derivative, of the power. So the derivative of a power, it's kind of, well, I mean, n could be anything. Um, so let's say n is a natural number, but it could be a thousand. And I'm hoping that I figure this out for a thousand as well. So, um, well, let's, let's try. The derivative, is the limit of you plug in x plus h and you plug in x and I should start doing my h is different from my m's, shouldn't I? You plug in uh, x plus h, you plug in x, you subtract it divide by h. So 
this is zero divided by zero. Um, but I'm hoping like I expanded x plus h cubed before that there was a formula uh, for expanding anything. And there is, um, maybe you've seen it. Um, like everything in life, that's a Wikipedia page. So, uh, this is what it is. You take, you have a sum, you take the nth power, and <clears throat> you you get you get a sum. You get this sum where you have x to the n, y to the zero, x to the n minus one, y to the one. So, for example, if n, n was five, I would have five zero for one, three, two. So I have every combination that adds up to the original power, and then I have some. So these things represent some numbers and and those numbers oh well, they have a formula uh, oh and there's a bunch of them um, and and these oh well, they have a formula so we could use this formula and and that would work the book does that uh, the book gives you two options and I kind of like the second one better so the second one is um, so the other option we have is instead of uh, using x plus h, use the other formula we have for the exact same thing, which is where we take x plus h and we call it a, and h is the difference between x and a. So I have a second point. Hmm. Sure. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, I'm not liking the fact that I'm calling this x. Say you have the function is x to the n. The derivative at a point a, I can think of it. So this is just the same. I'm just, I just have, I'm just calling it a instead of x now. This is the exact same formula as this one with a's instead of x's. But what I can do is say that this is x. So this is going to become, instead of calling the, the increments a letter, I'm going to call the second point by a letter. So then the increment is going to be just the, the difference. What are you doing? So I have the limit of x to the n minus a to the n divided by x minus a with the limit. And the second point is going to approach the first. So we've seen this formula before. Um, so this is, now I have known to expand. So what happens here is like the limits you've seen in chapter two, you, you plug in x equals a, you get zero divided by zero. And when you, you have zero in a polynomial, what you should hope happens and what always happens, what always happens is that you can factor out x minus a if um, if um, if x if plugging in x or x equals a gives you a zero. So um, how do we find the other polynomial? Um, well, we divide. Um, Really, really, we're just trying to, we're saying that this is a multiple of that. So what we're trying to do is divide. And the, you know how to divide, you know how to do long division, maybe you've forgotten, but um, the answer, so the answer is that you take 
x to the n minus one. And then you take n minus two times a, x minus three times a squared. And you take, you sum all the, all the different combinations where the exponents add up to m minus one. So in the end you have a to the m minus two plus a to the m minus one. So if, if this was like, if n was six, you would have x to the fifth and then four, one, three, two, two, three, one, four, pi zero, which if you are counting, if n was six, you get six things in the sum. Uh, and you can, you can do this by long division. Now, do I know how to do American long division? Uh, well, I know I'm gonna try, but uh, I know how to do Spanish long division, which is like American long division, but you place things, uh, everything is placed differently. So I think you go like this. <clears throat> and, and then you ask, how many times does x go into x to the n? Well, it goes x to the n minus one times. And then you multiply x to the n minus one times this, and you get x to the n minus a x to the n minus one. You made it so that these two would be the same. And then you subtract and you're left with a x to the n minus one. And you go, how many times does um, x minus a go into a x n minus one? So what I need to multiply by is I need an a and I need n minus two x's because there's one x here. I need one less x. Um, and now I multiply, I get a, a x to the n minus one minus. And if you do enough steps of this, you probably, hopefully you see the pattern where at every step you're, you have one more a, one less x, and you end up with what I just promised. So this derivative is, uh, oh, not h equals zero, a, a, x approaches a. Turns out we can, we can just divide these two polynomials and we get this sum of Exponent exponents adding up to um, adding up to m minus one. So if you take if you start with seven and you take all the first numbers that add up to m minus one, including zero, the first number can go from zero to sorry, they add up to m minus one, they add up to six. The first number can, number can go from zero to six. Um, that makes um, that makes it seven numbers. So n things. And when I plug in, so I can plug in x equals a. And I'm gonna get um, a to the n minus one. So I get, well, there's only a's now. And the thing is all the exponents add up to n minus one. So what I get is a bunch of n minus ones. And how many are there? You can think of making, if you make n equals one, uh, they have to add up to zero. So there's only one way to do that, which is zero plus zero. If you do n equals two, they have to add up to one. So you have one, zero, zero, one, which is two. If you make n equals three, they add up to two, you have, Zero, two, one, one, two, zero. That's three. So it's always it's always n. And that is the formula for the derivative. And that unsurprisingly is called the power rule. The power rule is the name people use. If uh, you have a function, a power function. It's derivative you get by um, 
taking the exponent, putting it, multiplying it out in front, and subtracting one from, from the exponent. So if I ask you for the derivative of x to the fifth, you would get five x to the fourth. And it even works if n is really any real number. Um, maybe x has to be positive because you know if n is one half, um, you you can't take the, the the square root of a negative number. But remember, the square root is the one half power. So um, I I put the one half out in front and I subtract one, and that is the derivative of the square root. We computed it. Um, a couple of days ago, and you can check it's it is the same thing. Um, one over x is the negative first power. So you take the exponent, you put it out in front, and then you subtract one, which will make the x um, to the negative one into x to the negative two. Um, all right, so that's one derivative that we know. Uh, stay tuned for every other derivative in the next couple of weeks. All right, have a good weekend.